So anyone who's watched me before will know that I'm a financial planner who's been in the advice profession now for the best part of 20 years. And I truly believe in the value of good financial advice, but not everybody needs it. And sometimes the best advice I can give is don't pay for financial advice. In this video, I'm gonna to explain to you based on my many years of experience, which circumstances don't require paid advice, but also when I feel advice is important, and when I feel it's absolutely essential. You can then apply that to your own circumstances and use it to work out what is the best move for you. What it comes down to is where is an advisor most likely to add value to you? Which circumstances are you likely to find that they'll make or save you more money than their fees will take away? And which circumstances are you more likely to find that their fees will cost you more than they gain you? If we haven't met before, I'm Chris Bourne. I specialize in helping people achieve and maintain financial independence for life tax efficiently. That's what my content is all about. So if you like that, don't forget to subscribe and let's go. One of the things I love about being a financial planner is the different types of people I meet. I love hearing their stories and their backgrounds in life and in business. And I've learned a lot from my clients over the years. When I first meet a client though, the most important thing is to establish whether my service is right for them. I don't think it's right to take on every person who inquires with me as a client because one, I have to be mindful of protecting my time, which is a finite resource, of course, for my existing clients. And two, because the costs of engaging me may exceed the value I can actually provide. So when people who are just starting out on their saving or investment journey inquire with me, it's likely that I'll say to them, my service isn't quite right for you yet. It may be in the future, but you need to do some things first to ensure that my value can exceed my cost. When you're starting out and you're many years away from converting your capital into income, your needs are quite straightforward. You just need to build up money. And all you need are the core principles in order to do that in the most effective way. Number one, make investing a habit and automate the process of doing it. Pay yourself first. When you receive any income, the first thing you should do is invest some of that income. A great starting point is 10%, 10% of what you earn. The habit is more important than the amount when you first start. It's much easier to increase a direct debit that's already started than to start from scratch because you're used to that money being invested. Number two, be tax efficient. Use the tax-free investment vehicles that are available to you. The less tax you pay, the more money you keep. Wherever you are in the world, there'll probably be some sort of tax incentivized investment wrapper to use like the ISA in the UK or the Roth IRA or the TFSA in the US and Canada. Pensions also offer an upfront boost to what you pay in. So these should be used for long-term investing as well. Number three, keep your costs to a minimum. You'll have to pay some charges for investments because the companies that manage them need to make money, but keep them as low as possible. You don't really need to be paying more than 0.3% a year to begin with, max. Once again, the less you pay in those early stages, the more you keep and the more that will then compound up over time to make your money pot grow even bigger. Money saved is money earned. If you searched YouTube for the best low cost investment funds, there'd be a million videos by people who've done all of that research for you, telling you exactly what they are, exactly where to find them, and exactly how to open them, step by step, wherever you are in the world. That information is totally free. Number four, go global to spread your risk across the globe and stick with the strategy. Any fund that says global or all world in its title is the type of thing you'll be looking for. But remember that investing is a long-term game and the journey will sometimes be bumpy. Don't abandon your strategy, stick to it. Don't be checking your investment values every day. You don't need to. It's what they're worth in 10 or 15 years time that matters. So block out the noise, set and forget. That's the sort of general information I'd give to somebody who's just starting out, which is the type of wisdom you'd find across YouTube for free. So because that sort of strategy could be easily implemented directly, I wouldn't want to charge someone for simply following those core principles. I'd also say to somebody that investing is important, 
but protecting your ability to invest is probably more important. Always take out life cover, critical illness cover, and income replacement cover when you're young, because it will never be this cheap again. Taking it out early will save you money in the long run. Remember, if you're finding any of this useful, guys, to hit the like button below, as it just tells YouTube that it's a video worth showing to people. Now, the thing is, despite that wisdom being freely available, some people will still feel more comfortable having an advisor to guide them and put things in place for them. Now, there's absolutely no problem with that. If you personally feel you're getting value for the fees that are agreed, because that peace of mind is important to you, and an advisor is happy to work with you, that's great. I'm not saying don't seek advice if you really feel you need it, but I do think that most people could replicate what any advisor could do in that space relatively easily. There is actually a company though who are set up to provide a kind of guidance service to all of their customers within their ongoing fee. And the minimum investment commitment is only 500 pounds as an initial investment. I'll be doing a video about them soon, so make sure you're subscribed for that. As a side note, if any advisor tries to tell you that the reason you should use them is because they can provide better investment growth than you could obtain yourself, don't believe them. They can't. Nobody is able to guarantee that. That's not what financial advisors are there to do. There does come a point in everyone's lives though where I think proper financial planning advice starts to become important. When you've built up a reasonable pot of money, and that's objective of course, because what is reasonable to one person probably isn't to another. It all depends on the lifestyle you're accustomed to. But certainly, when you've got, let's say, £250,000 or $250,000 or more of investable assets, and you're starting to think about that next stage, maybe just taking your foot off the gas a bit or, or perhaps complete retirement, and you're asking questions like, how much is enough? What do I actually need to, to do now to get there? How long is it going to take me? When you're asking those questions, that's when good financial planning advice can help. I personally thoroughly believe in the power of cash flow modeling, which takes details of all of your current circumstances and works out taking account of expenses, taking account of inflation, taking account of tax, where you are in relation to your objectives and what you need to do to get there. In short, it provides clarity and clarity is priceless. When done properly, you can have a roadmap to financial freedom. A good advisor can use cash flow modeling not only to tell you when you can retire, but what your spending capacity in retirement is, what the most tax efficient way of extracting your money is. What would be the case if there was a market crash? Could you still maintain your lifestyle comfortably? Almost any scenario can be assessed and a strategy pre-agreed for it. Now that kind of peace of mind is highly valuable. I think it is. Anyway, what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Do you think that sort of clarity and the comfort of knowing that your financial situation is secure is valuable? When you're at that stage of your life, the value of advice starts to outweigh the cost much more than when you're just starting out. There are certain circumstances though where I believe advice is critical because almost without exception, a good advisor will save you more than they will cost you and you will end up better off. This is really where advanced tax planning knowledge is required. If you're somebody with a lot of capital or tangible assets, having an expert to form a strategy based on a sound knowledge of allowances, reliefs, wrappers, extraction timings and so forth will be valuable. Accountants can do some of that, but they generally won't be able to implement and won't know some of the intricacies of different tax wrappers. That's why I work with a number of accountants very closely. If you're UK based, anybody whose pension assets are going to breach the lifetime allowance needs advice. Anybody whose estate is going to exceed the inheritance tax nil rate band for any other reason than just their main residence carrying them over that threshold needs advice. Strategies can be implemented with the use of different investment vehicles, with the use of trusts that will save fortunes. It's not uncommon for my advice to save people tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands of pounds in some cases. It would be the same wherever you are in the world once your assets start to become subject to estate taxes. That's when choosing the right financial planner is the right thing to do. As usual, 
please don't leave that like button grey and I'll be back soon.